I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 46, and let's focus on verses 1 through 4. Israel set out with all that he had, and he came to Beersheba, and he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. That night God spoke to Israel in a vision. Jacob, Jacob, he said, and Jacob replied, Here I am. God said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you a great nation there. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I will bring you back. Joseph will put his hands on your eyes. Genesis 46, verses 1 through 4. You know, I always like this verbal exchange between Jacob and the Lord. First off, Jacob seems to be learning his lessons. Having set out on his journey, Jacob realized the gravity of it all, and he offered a sacrifice to the God of his father, Isaac. And he had experienced similar moments and significant moments of divine deliverance. But given recent family history, Jacob must have been wondering if the Lord had abandoned him. You see, the heel catcher, because that was his name, Jacob, that's what it meant. Well, he was wondering if he was setting himself up for another fall. Interesting is how God called him by his former name, Jacob, and not the name that he had bestowed upon him earlier, Israel. You see, as long as Jacob perceived a distance from himself and the Lord, he would most likely fall back into his old ways. And I believe that God was reminding him of where he had been before assuring him of where he was going. God's reference to his association with Isaac was a somber reminder that God's promise is the sustaining factor in Israel's blessing, not Jacob's righteousness. So once that's established, God articulates his grace toward Jacob and to all Israel. His blessing is not, I'll be here holding down the fort in Canaan, hope you write. No, God promised to personally accompany Israel. God's promise is enough, but his presence is even better. God would make Israel a great nation during their stay in Egypt. Notice that great does not mean righteous, but simply large. Righteousness would come much later during the children of Israel's time in the desert. Israel's deliverance from Egypt was quick, but it took 40 years to purge Egypt out of Israel. What is great to me is how God told all of this to Abraham, I mean everything, down to the 400 years in Egyptian slavery, and it all came true. Now God was making promises to Jacob. In a few days, we're going to read of the fulfillment of some of those promises, and here's a sneak peek in Genesis chapter 50, verses 12 through 14. So Jacob's sons did for him what he had commanded them. They carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave at Machpelah in the field near Mamre, which Abraham had purchased as a burial site from Ephron the Hittite. After Joseph buried his father, he returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who had gone with him to bury his father. You know, God keeps his promises and he can be trusted and he has the power to accomplish his will despite even his own children's sinful ignorance. So what promises of his are you trusting in? I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at groundworksministries.com.